Hello everyone, it's uh, Russell Lowe speaking. I'm a Senior Lecturer in Architecture at the University of New South Wales. I teach inside uh, the Architecture Program which is a part of the Faculty of the Built Environment. Um, today I'm going to show you how to make an entity move up and down in uh, Crisis in actually the Sandbox 2 using uh, key presses uh, on the keyboard. Uh, so the first thing we need to do is we need to throw in a entity. We've been using brushes so far in Architecture 1101 uh, so we're going to use entities and I'll just close this so you can see this is a list. Open up a physics entity and select a basic entity. Drag it into the world and you can see there's nothing, uh, there's no model that's being used. So what we need to do is scroll down on the right hand side into its properties and you'll see model. Click on that, there's a folder that you can click on to open. This navigates to your uh, uh, game objects folder by default but uh, or maybe to the objects folder by default so search for your objects. Uh, I'm going to use this um, Russell 7th of May one. Uh, open that up and you can see it pops into the world. Uh, hit the 2 key to rotate it around 90 degrees and you can see that 90 degrees on the bottom of your window there and then uh, hit the one key to move it up and down. We're going to position this as if it's a uh, elevator. Now um, some of you who are running 32-bit uh, Windows 7 um, will be looking down the bottom of your screen right now going uh, where is this? Um, that's a bit of a glitch um, with Windows 7 on 32-bit systems only. Uh, it doesn't show you these things. So that's going to cause us a, a few problems and we're going to have to work around them um, when we trigger this thing to move up and down. Uh, so we'll start with that and then everybody knows. Uh, it's actually a good thing to know anyway. Um, so what we're going to do, we've got this thing selected, we're going to right uh, drag the sort of menu down on the right hand side and we're going to do, um, we're going to create this flow graph. Um, so I'll hit that and call it elevator. Uh, elevator. I've done it 01. Uh, let's try 01 again. Okay. So we've got uh, this entry uh, in this window. This is a flow graph. This is a visual scripting interface. So you can um, put uh, elements of script together and just sort of wire them up as if you're wiring up a circuit board. Um, first thing I'm going to do is uh, add a node. And so I right click and go add node and go into uh, movement and move entity 2. Now I think that just went off the bottom of your screen so maybe I'll put this up here. Go right click add node uh, movement and that's going off the edge of your screen as well. Um, so uh, this is the node and you can see where I get to it via, these, um, via the title at the top choose entity, right click on that and go uh, assign graph entity which is uh, which is what this um, uh, flow graph is based on and you can see it's got a destination um, and some other things, ease distance and speed, we can modify those into the inputs on this side here. So if we open up that and we need an XYZ um, now these are global so if we uh, global figures, so if we look at the um, down the bottom here you can see 300 or 304, so I'll change that to 300 so it's a nice, which scoots it to the side a little bit, um, and this one is 15.7 so I'll call it 16 and hit enter, and so that's some nice even numbers that I can whack into here um, to say 300, X is Y is 300, and I'm going to move it up 50 so that's, uh, sorry that was just off the screen, um, so I just put 300 in here, 300 in here, and uh, because it's 16 at the moment, I'm going to add 50 to it, so um, call it 66. Lovely mathematics. Um, now, if you're running a Windows 32-bit system, you need to figure out what those numbers are before you can put them in. Um, so what we'll do is we'll create a few more nodes. Uh, so add node and we're going to create an HUD and a display debug message. And what that does is put a message onto the screen. I'm going to give it a message 
by adding another node and the node is going to be an entity uh, and get position get pos and I'm going to say uh, what entity that is so that right click and go assign graph entity that's the entity that's going to get the position of drag an arrow from that position to the message if you drag that arrow to the wrong thing you can see you can mouse over it and it changes the cursor and you can right click and go remove so I'll just do that again that way if you sort of get excited and stick it onto the wrong thing you can change it afterwards uh, now that's going to do that but I want to trigger that um, uh, when I'm in the game so I'm going to right click and go add node and then input and key and I'm going to say when it's pressed I'm going to get that position and display it on the screen and if I click the input key it says what key am I going to push and I'm going to push the L key so I just hit L on the keyboard and so when I hit the L key it's going to get that position and stick it onto the screen um, so we can test that by jumping into the world control G and then hit the L key and you can see it displays uh, on the top left hand side there 300 by 300 by 16 yours will be a bit messier than that uh, yours will be figures down to six decimal places if you're using a, a 32 bit system and haven't adjusted it so it's neat um, but all you do is you uh, write them down and you'll be fine um, so that's a bit of a workaround for those people and it's also kind of handy when this um, uh, for a bunch of different things uh, so going back to our flow graph uh, we need to have an input key so I'll select that uh, key there and go control C and then click out here and go control V I'm going to say pressed to start and this time I'm going to change that key to uh, P so when I hit the P key it's going to go up to 300 by 300 so it's going to stay in the same XY position but go up 50 units to 66 uh, the speed that it's going to move at is going to be 10 meters a second uh, so put that in the speed uh, field and the ease distance I'm going to put that at 4 that just makes it so that it doesn't take off at 10 meters a second instantly and, and kill your player it also slows down a bit slower as well so that's uh, so the P key is going to move it up I'm going to select both of those things by holding down control and left clicking on them go control C to copy control V to do that uh, to paste them, go pressed to start and I'm going to select this key here actually you have to click off if you've got two things selected you have to click into the grey field somewhere so that they're unselected so then you can select one and get access to its inputs so I've selected one this time I'm going to change that to N last uh, time I did this tutorial uh, I actually put it on M and when I hit the M key it opened up the map interface in game so you want to make sure that your keys don't actually trigger other things in game to find that out go into the game and hit some keys if it doesn't do anything then you know you can use it uh, so N is going to make this thing instead of uh, go to 66 I'm going to expand that and make it go to 16 which is where it is at the moment so if I hit the um, if I hit the P key it's going to go up to 66 uh, if I hit the um, uh, N key it's going to come down to 16 so that's all there is to it close that go control G to jump into the game hit the uh, P key makes it move up if I hit the L key as it's doing that you can see that it gives me the um, position that it's at at the time and if I hit the N key I hit the L key on the way down as well just randomly hitting the L key just to see that it's giving me these numbers um, in the interface so we're all good to go if you don't want those numbers showing up when you're um, uh, working on your game later on just uh, disable the um, disable the input so I'll show you how to do that click the um, click your entity go open flow graph and then uh, middle mouse click pushing down lets you pan around and uh, middle mouse click rolling in lets you um, uh, lets you zoom in and I'm going to right click on that and go remove and now it's not going to show up when I uh, when I'm in game so if I go control G again whoop, 
it did show up. That's interesting. Looks like it just shows up um, by default with a debug. So let's get rid of it completely then. So flow graph open. I did hit the L key a few times and it didn't give me a new position so it's clearly this is enabled um, to begin with. So just right click on here and go remove. Now it's not going to show up. Control G. Nothing. So P goes up. Wait for it to get to the top. And N comes back down. Alright, so um, why don't you have a crack at that. Cheers.